take a look at, um, what are we going to take a look at? Uh, I think it was number 15. We got R is equal to 4 cosine 2 theta. And um, if I look at the calculator, you have to make sure you're in the right mode. So if you're not in polar, you want to do your mode and choose your view as uh, polar. And then we go to Y equals, press clear. We got 4 cosine 2 theta. So I do 2 and I push the X key, but the X key now puts theta on there for us. And um, then I'm going to, if you do graph, it'll still be uh, according to your negative 10 to, to positive 10. So you may want to do a um, zoom and choose Z trig, number 7, to get a little bit better view. And now that's our graph. Now sometimes you may not get the correct graph when you're graphing these. You have to be careful when you're doing polar. If you go to window, it gives us our um, min and max. And um, then you got your x min, x max. So not only do you have your x and y values, but you have your angle. So it, if this isn't going out where it needs to, then you'll have to adjust these settings right here. Let me exit out of there. And I don't know if I'll do all of this, but we'll, we'll start it. Okay. Using um, what the shape looks like uh, can help with the graphing. Um, but I'm just going to look at a, a straight um, uh, table. T-chart. Okay, so if I plug 0 in for theta, then we got R. Try it again. We got 4 times cosine of uh, 2 times 0 gives us 4 cosine of 0 and if I think of my um, uh, unit circle um, cosine of 0 is 1 so that gives us 4 so at angle 0 the distance is going to be 4 so that puts a point there Now, um, if I try my next angle, pi over 4, then we have 4 cosine of 2 times pi over 4 gives us 4 cosine uh, pi over 2. And um, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so 4 times 0 uh, gives us 0. Which means, now here's pi over 4, which means I'm back uh, back to here, because um, r is equal to 0. Now remember, r is a distance out here from the origin. Okay, so it started here and ended up here. Now if I'm curious um, what's happened in the middle, I could do the angle between 0 and pi over 4, pi over 8, Sometimes uh, that gives you something meaningful, sometimes not. Usually you have to use your calculator. So if I do 2 times pi over 8, that gives us 4 cosine of pi over 4. Cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2, and I don't know the approximation of that, so let me just plug that in. So I got 4, I think I got 4, yeah, 4 times the square root of 2 over 2 and that gives us 2.8 approximately okay so at pi over 8 here's pi over 4 pi over 8 is about right there we said it's going out of distance at 2.8 so if this is 4 2.8, um, let's see, 2 would probably be about um, right there. 2.8, let's say, is right there. 
Okay, so you're starting to see a, a, a picture here. Okay, what's what's our next one? Um, I guess the next one passed. This is uh, equivalent to two pi over eight. So we went zero pi over eight, two pi over eight. We could even try three pi over eight. So we're going to have four cosine of two times three pi over eight gives us four cosine of um, three pi over four. And um, three pi over four. It's negative square root of two over two. Um, so that's going to give us negative two point eight. So negative two point eight. Okay, so we're starting to think this through. Zero, four. We're starting here. And then um, a pi over eight is going to 2.8. So it's going like that. And then back to uh, zero, right there. And um, then this is going negative 2.8. So about right right there. Now you have to kind of know what it looks like to understand the picture. I mean we can we can cover our calculator here and we, we know the picture so it's curving around and then it's going down like that which means I know it's going down like this. Okay now the next one is 4 pi over 8 or pi over 2 We've got 4 cosine of 2 times pi over 2, which is 4 cosine, 2's cancel, we've got pi, which is negative 1, which gives us negative 4. Uh, so this angle is pi over 2, so here's pi over 2 right here, but I'm going to negative 4. Okay, now I'm getting confused on the graph myself. <laughs> Zero to four. Okay, I'm gonna trace this just so I see the flow. So I'm gonna go back to y equals. Come over here, and uh, that's a thick line. That's um, I've got to trace there. Let's press graph. Okay, so it's coming down. Oh, okay. Huh, I was wrong about how the how it curved. Let me try it again. Graph. to disappear. How do I get it to disappear? Oh, that keeps um, keeps tracing it. I didn't realize it did that. But then you can see the flow. Let's get it back over here. Here, then it goes to there, and it comes down like that and curves around. Okay. And I'll press Y equals to shut that off, I guess. Assuming it's not stuck in an infinite loop now. Okay. Hmm. So this, this should have curved up. Okay, so let's try it again. That should have curved like this. Okay, that makes sense with pi over 2 and negative 4. If that distance is 4, the negative 4 would be down to here. Because again, pi over 2 would normally be in this direction, but negative goes the other direction. So then it curves around like this. My next one, 5 pi over 8. We'd have cosine of um, 2 times 5 pi over 8. Now, um, if I plug that in my calculator, if I do 4 cosine 2 theta, 
which is what we got right here. If I go to my table setup, if I do second window, I want to set independent to ask. If it's not already to ask, you down arrow to it, right arrow to ask, and press enter. Then exit out, second mode, and then go to your table. Do a second graph. And I'm going to get lazy here. I'm in radians, so um, I'll type in 5 pi over 8. So 5 pi divided by 8. And that's going to give us negative 2.8. Okay, so here's, um, this is pi over 8, 2 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, 4 pi over 8. So 5 pi over 8 is going out in this direction. Except for we're going um, negative 2.8. So I'm going to go back this way to about right <coughs> here maybe. So then this continues its curve. And um, 6 pi over 8. So 6, hmm. pi over 8, well, that's pretty bizarre, uh, 4e to the negative 13, that's 0. <laughs> okay, so 6 pi over 8 is 0, here's 6 pi over 8 which is back to here, which makes sense since it's curving around like that. Then 7 pi over 8. So 7 pi over 8 gives us 2.8. Now you see a pattern here. We're not seeing many values except for 4, 2.8, and 0, and then the negative versions of those. So 7 pi over 8 is right here. And we're going to distance 2.8, which is about that distance, which is, I don't know, let's say right there. And that's where we left off, so I'm curving around like that. Next one, 8 pi over 8, or pi. gives us 4. So this is 8 pi over 8, and 4 is this distance, so um, I don't know, about right there I guess. And it keeps curving around. Now if I continued this uh, big t-chart, I would see that it goes back, <laughs> use your imagination, um, something like that. Obviously I can't draw freehand. Now, kind of tedious. And I don't know if the book here gives you the different forms of them. But understanding um, some of the symmetry. Helps with the graph. And... Um, Some books have nice tables for these. I guess this is as good as it gets for the table. Now here we had cosine. So we got cosine here, and n would be the number before theta. And they tell you if n is an even number, then the number of petals is 2n. So the fact that uh, this was 2, the number of petals is 2 times 2, or 4. That's why we had 4 petals. Now when you got petals, you know that they're they're symmetric. So after you get one petal, you can automatically um, go ahead and do the other petals. You don't have to sit there and build a big t-chart. So that simplifies it. There's even other techniques that help you help you. Um, like A here. Our A was four, and see how far out this petal went? Went out to four. And um, so very rough sketch, once you know those, then you can come up with that. Now the even, now they don't really give you
give you any kind of clue here, but uh, if you look at these, these are both um, these are both uh, cosine. So there's cosine, and here's five. Now five, you treat it different. It says in is an odd number, the number of petals is in. But notice both of them, the symmetry involved. So like this, for this pedal right here, where I'm drawing my mouse around, is symmetric to the x-axis. On the other hand, if you look at sine, sine is not that way. How does that benefit us? If I was just looking for a very uh, crude sketch, and I got like r is equal to 6 cosine of um, 2 theta. Kind of the same idea as this, but the number's different. We know there's four petals. You know here's a distance of six, so we know one of the petals is gonna look like that. We know we got four. <laughs> so we know before we even begin it's gonna look like that. On the other hand, if you have um, I'm gonna refer to the book since my graphing skills are non existent. You see here we have um, uh, four, then two times four is eight, so we now got eight petals. And so you have your beginning one here. If you put one here, one here, one here, and one here, that's four, so you know there's one exactly in the middle also. And the symmetry um, applies. Now here, this was on um, five, so we knew it had five petals. Now here, it's still on our first petal, it's metric to the x-axis but since it's a odd number we can't do the same trick as what we did here but you notice that they're all equal distance apart now to get a little bit more exact you can use either use a graphing uh, utility or plot points um, to help you figure out what the and that's what they show here in the book uh, plotting points 